Goedendag dames en heren. Ik ben Desiree Reuver, medisch research journalist. En ik ga een vraaggesprek houden met een Iraanse nucleaire fysicus. En wat hij heeft gedaan is heel bijzonder. Hij heeft heel goed gekeken naar de natuur. En heeft dat vertaald naar middelen... Eerst een instantie om in de ruimtevaart antwoorden te vinden voor reizen in de ruimte zonder grote hoeveelheden brandstof, zonder artsen aan boord, zonder medicatie, zonder voeding aan boord en zonder water aan boord. En diezelfde principes die hij vond in de natuur, heeft hij nagemaakt, kan hij namaken, individueel gericht op patiënten met ziekten als MS, fibromyalgie, uh, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, kanker, uh, wat was er nog meer? Nou, een, een hele rij van ziekten. Want wat hij in feite doet, is dat hij het lichaam leert om weer terug te gaan naar de oorspronkelijke gezonde status. Het lichaam is in feite, een, net als het universum, een samenspel van organen en cellen die allemaal in een geheel met elkaar samenwerken en als een van de cellen of een van de organen uit balans gaat, dus energetisch iets anders gaat doen, hij noemt dat uh, magnetic gravitational iets anders gaat doen, dan moeten de rest van de organen en het rest van het systeem ook mee om weer een nieuwe balans te vinden. En als die situatie lang aanhoudt, dan betekent dat dat het lichaam ziek wordt. Maar door zijn inzichten in het feit dat ziekte een disbalans is tussen de delen in het lichaam of de cellen in het lichaam, betekent dat dat als je de juiste informatie voedt aan het lichaam, die balans weer kan worden hersteld naar de oorspronkelijke gezonde situatie. En daar ga ik met hem over praten, want dit is natuurlijk iets wat heel ver weg is van het medisch wetenschappelijk model zoals wij dat tegenwoordig hanteren. En eigenlijk is het zo dat als je naar Miran Kesje luistert, dat je eigenlijk alles moet vergeten wat je hebt geleerd. I'm fine. You had a very very busy day today and I'm very glad that you find the time and the energy to have this conversation with me about your amazing technologies. Do I have a choice with you? <laughs> oh, yes, you do. <laughs> um, what I encounter when I try to explain what you designed uh, according to nature, because you looked at nature, at the universe, and then you designed some technologies to be used in space travel, but it's also applicable to health, medical s situations. Uh, could you could you tell me what happened in your life? What, what, how did that come about? At the moment, we work as a foundation, space technology. So when you start a space technology based organization, you cannot just consider yourself involving uh, motion or energy. In the space you need food for your passengers, you need air for your passengers, you need material for colonization, and you need Col colonization. Colonization, okay. And you need uh, also su support uh, equipment. And my philosophy has been once we go to space, because now we have developed the technology which is exactly the way the universe works. That's why what we do is strange. So when we go to space, we don't expect to to come back in short term like NASA because we run out of water, we run out of food, or mm -hmm. we run out of medicine. We have looked at uh, the new developments in a different way than how the man has done for millions of years. Yeah. Up to now, we looked at the birds and we copied the birds. Mm -hmm. We made the aeroplanes. We looked at the fire and we made everything to work around the fire. 
there is no birth in the space and there is no fire in the space. Everything works on magnetic gravitational positioning and all the celestial objects have two things, gravity and magnetic field. And the operation of the gravitational field and magnetic field dictates their motion, their position, and what they use and how, what they produce. So now all we've done is we have gone into that step of producing a mini Earth, which finds its position in this environment without burning any fuel. And in that mini Earth, you can produce whatever you like. Mm. And the only thing is understanding how magnetic fields of different strength and different positioning come together to produce what do you want to call it? Iron, air, coal. Okay. So that's the only difference. NASA does the same. European Space Agency does the same. The Chinese Space Agency, the Iranian Space Agency does the same. They do not just consider going up. They send human up. They support their life. They support their food. They calculate everything. Now with this technology, that we understand how matters are created in the universe. We don't need to carry food. We produce food as needed according to the demand in the space. And they, people say it's a bad fairy tale, but the reality is that uh, uh, we have understood, we have submitted papers, we submitted materials, been tested, and uh, our space technology at the moment is in the hand of uh, a couple of governments. They are running with it. And uh, so we are past the theoretical side. And in part of the technology in the space is, when you go to space, I always say, to carry all the medicine and all the doctors is impossibilities. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we start looking at a system which is a unified system that you can use the system for any disease. When we come across a new virus in the space, I can't say, oh, I've got somebody sick, I've got to go all the way back to Earth to go to pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. You have to find an answer there and there. So with this technology, we are finding that answer slowly by slowly. We just started it. We haven't, we haven't even got up yet. We're still mm -hmm. crawling, but the results are very interesting. We're running over a thousand cases plus now around the world. We've run the past seven, ten years. And we see the game of the propulsion is finished. The NASA game. The the, yeah. the, the, what do you call it, uh, the uh, Chinese firework in a bigger scale, what we call it, the rocket space the rocket technology space, is yeah. finished. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I always say in all my talks, we don't see any wing on the Earth, but the Earth has been moving for billions of years, 1,600 yeah. kilometers an hour around itself, and up to 1 million kilometers mm -hmm. in this cosmos. So, we have understood the concept now, for millions of years, we tried to commit the air bird. Now, in the past 150 years, we made the aircrafts. That's all they are, a bird with a metal wing. Yeah. And now we copied the working of the universe. It will, people will catch up with it very soon, very fast, because they've been living with it. They just it's ignore it. Yeah, and it's logical. It, it has been there, it's logical. Is it logical? Is it's it? part of us. It, yeah. it doesn't have a logic. It's, it's natural. It's a difference mm -hmm. between logical and natural. Okay, yeah. yeah. We live with it. We It's part of our daily life. <coughs> we call it gravity because it holds on, hold us to the Earth. Mm -hmm. We call it magnetic field because it gives us atmospheric protection. And any entity in the universe, if it's an electron, a proton, Earth, the Sun, the uh, galaxies, the universe, does the same process, but different amount of the material of the same thing in it. So, once we learn in one measure, we can copy it in a bigger and smaller measure. And measures. you can translate it to the human. Yes, oh. I use, you see, the, the problem is, because now we understand everything works the same. Mm -hmm. So, um, NASA needs to send people and use billions of dollars to send people to space because they fight against everything, they fight against the gravity, they have this weightlessness situation in the space. When you work with the way the universe works, you don't have the weightlessness. The weightlessness doesn't exist because you can create a zone which is 1G. 
Mm -hmm. The same as her. Then you find out there is no need for playing around with sending space rockets to space to measure something. Human body is a galaxy. I brought the knowledge from the space into human body. Human body responds to me faster. I can understand the position of you call it Jupiter or Saturn, we call it the heart and the lung, mm -hmm. how they are positioned in the body, not just because of them, why they are there, why they are positioned in that place, why you have fingers at the end of your hand, not on your head. These all have reasons. Yeah, yeah. So now we brought the knowledge after 30 years of space technology research into the medical. Mm -hmm. We use the body as a galaxy, we learn from the body and now we go to the space again. Yeah, so yeah. We learn. Yeah. So it's yeah, a power Yeah. <laughs> so uh, space agencies have spent billions and have spent a few hundred euros. It's just that my galaxy is always next to me, somebody's body. Yeah. And that's how and that's how it comes to it. Yeah. And it's all the same, there's no difference. No. Hmm. Yeah, and that, that is, I think that is the, the, the thing that is most difficult for people to understand, that it is so simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. No, it's, it's just we, we have somehow decided or we've been forced through our own ignorance to deny our own existence and mm. how we came to be and how we exist in the in, in, in the universe. Yeah. Once we understand how and why, then I'm sure this technology in the next five or ten years will go far more than what the computers did in the past 20, 30 years. Mm. Because people had to go and learn about computers. Now they know their own body and they know how they react, so they can do the things themselves much easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need a we have been Microsoft. Taught, yeah, no, and we have been taught things are a, a certain way, but if you really look at life and, and at nature, it, it's it's not true what we are being taught in universities. Some so of it is correct. You can't deny the past uh, technology. You can't deny the past education. It's just that with our process, we just put the things in order. Mm -hmm. We haven't discovered anything new. Nothing has been discovered new. But putting it in the order, uh -huh. which has made the difference. Yeah, I see. We know the gravity has been here, we know the magnetosphere of the Earth, what we call our atmosphere has been here, but we never understood that the origin of gravity and magnetic field is the same materials. Mm -hmm. And now we made a system copy of the Earth, and it creates gravity, a magnetic field. So when we want to move slightly higher, we increase our magnetic field. So we don't push ourselves away. The Earth's magnetic field and our system magnetic field are like two similar poles. So they oh, find their space. Oh, yeah. They find a comfort zone, balance, mm -hmm. positioning. And then so you move. There is no anti-gravity. I always say in my talks, anybody who speaks about anti-gravity, is the guy who hasn't understood it. Nothing about the simple physics. Two similar poles repel, yeah, you so you go move away. Two similar, yeah. two dissimilar poles attract, gravitate. So all we do, we create a dynamic plasma system, which is like Earth, which is like a proton, which is like the atoms of the structure of human body. So you, they find their position according to their strength in respect to each other. So you want to go 100 meter up, you go 100 meter up, you want to go 1,000 meter. Uh, this slingshot effect that NASA does, and you return and turn and turn, this is finished. Yeah. This is so over. Now we go vertically up and down the way we like, like elevator. So you can go in any direction at the same time, understanding how Earth moves in round the Sun. Yeah. Earth doesn't go up and down in respect to the Sun. No. To fire. It moves, and that moving has a certain a specific magnetic gravitational positioning in respect to the sun and other that materials yeah. within the solar system. So uh, when you understand that, then you want to go up and down, sideways, is irrelevant. At the same time, when you produce this gravitational magnetic field system, when your boundary of your the, the magnetic field passes the boundary of your system, being a craft, being a car, even being a chair, then you become a self-sustained system. You become a plasma, you become an atom. It doesn't matter what happens outside, internally you're yourself. It's like Earth. Whatever we do on this Earth 
it doesn't affect any other planets because Earth has its own gravitational and magnetic field, mm -hmm. so it becomes the independent unit. Mm -hmm. So the when you build such a system, you become independent unit. Whatever you do with it, doesn't matter how many tons is in it, mm. its weight becomes irrelevant. And at the same time, the magnetic field gives you a shielding effect. Exactly like Earth. Earth gives us a shielding effect and nothing can come in. Any cosmic dust comes in, we see it as a, what do you call it, shooting stars or whatever. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the same thing happens. These systems, when they pass around you have the uh, the, the magnetic field passes the boundary of the aircraft, they create a shield. So the speed goes through the window. The, 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 what they call, like as I always say, Concorde used to expand. One of the problems is because we have to overcome the friction. Now there is no materialistic or material friction. It's field and field. Yeah. So you travel at much higher speeds without friction. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. That's how plasmas work. And then you find out uh, very, very soon that this thing, people will just walk into it. They don't understand, it. especially the young generation. Yeah. We develop this technology beyond even what we can imagine. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what people say, uh, we get people walking after four or five months by just drinking water or sitting in a chair. Well, they've been paralyzed for five or ten years in chair. It's just understanding where it's gone wrong in the body and letting the body know what it needs to do the job. They have no side effects, that's over. You were talking about plasma uh, and whether you sit in a chair or... Yeah, whatever. If you sit in a chair or if you uh, go in the car, it's all the same. You create a field around you. And you that... become independent unit. Yeah, in, with your technology, that is. Mm, this is the universal technology, oh, not my technology. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, yeah. That's what happens in the universe. Okay. This is what people keep on telling, um, show us an energy system, otherwise you're, you're a crook. Show us a lifting system, otherwise you're a crook. I say, you show me anybody has managed to move somebody who's been 15 years, 10 years in a wheelchair walking, yeah. then I can show you how magic works. Mm -hmm. You are talking about a chair and water that uh, brings the body into a state of the way it used to be in a healthy position. That is the the whole body, the whole structure of human body mm -hmm. works on the information transfer. Yeah, we would like to call the cables our neural system. And we would like to call our physical part where we do things our muscles. Yeah. But it's literally a transformation or transfer of information from the headquarter, which is the brain, to the soldiers, which are the fingers and the muscles. Mm -hmm. So if you understand how this information is transferred, if you understand how the communication line works, yeah. then you understand who's made a mistake in the headquarters you can go out and put the things right. Yeah. And at the moment with the pharmaceuticals and the man's medicine with the roots and everything else which we've been doing for millions of years, we always fight to find a way to overcome the damage. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the brain has a system that has a memory of how it was and how it is. And then when you give it the information where it's gone wrong, it goes back and it puts the same thing right itself. You don't need to fight anything. This is the whole logic behind the Keshe Foundation. The time of fighting is over. We fight to overcome gravity. We fight in our body to overcome diseases. We mm -hmm. fight in our planet to own more. Mm -hmm. We fight to live. This fighting is finished because yeah. with this technology, you work within the structure. You don't need to fight to move. You just find your position. In the body, you don't need to fight to overcome a disease. You find what's gone wrong in the magnetic gravitational field, you put it right and the disease the mm -hmm. moment and it disappears. In the uh, energy, it's the same. We don't burn things to overcome to make electricity. We open the plasma and we take from the plasma what we need, the amount we need, at the point we need. And the plasma, can you define that? Plasma is a very simple way. If you don't understand it, we go to different scale of plasma. Mm -hmm. Plasma is a source. Yeah which 
releases part of his magnetic gravitational field out. Mm -hmm. And where, from the source to the point where it becomes tangible to man or human eye, yeah. then it becomes matter, that is mm -hmm. a plasma. Oh, okay. So, if it's too hard to imagine, the center of the plasma is the sun. Mm -hmm. And when the magnetic field and gravitational field of the sun radiate outwards, yeah. till the boundary where they become balanced with the other magnetic gravitational fields in the environment, that becomes the plasma of the solar system. So yeah. anything in this plasma which is lost enough its strength to reach the matter strength, magnetic field, gravitational field, becomes detectable and tangible to us, so we call it matter. Right. So a field which has started from the sun, let's say, 10 minutes ago, in half an hour it loses enough energy and it's enough magnetic field and gravitational field that becomes the tangible level to us, so we see it. The same thing happens with the plasma of a proton. So it's become very fashionable in the past few months that the scientists in CERNs are looking for God's particle. Yeah. There's a it's lot of PhDs. Yeah. I say, if you haven't seen a God's particle, you are a God particle, I'm a God particle. Mm -hmm. Because you are a magnetic gravitational field from the source, the sun, which has happened to become tangible. So these scientists are looking for themselves in a little plasma. Yeah. So, in a way, it's the quantity in the entity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, if you have less of, you call it a proton. If you have more of the same thing, we call it Earth plasma. If you have more of the same thing, we call it plasma of the Sun. And then you go to the plasma of galaxies and you go to plasma of universe. It's all the same source, but different amount in the same source. Yeah. So, and then the thing is, us physicists and cosmologists, because we were a bit ignorant ourselves, we have made different names for the same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the, in the uh, solar system, we call the source the Sun. Us physicists, nuclear physicists, become that clever, we call it antimatter. But actually antimatter is the source of the plasma. Mm -hmm. And then, the cosmologists, they become a bit clever, they call it the uh, dark and black hole. Dark, what do you call it, black hole. So, if you unify the same word as a source or a principal matter, mm -hmm. then, then you say principal matter of the Earth, of the solar system, then you know you're talking about the star. You talk about the principal matter of the plasma, then you know you're talking about uh, what they call antimatter. When you talk about the principal uh, source of a galaxy, then you know you're talking about the black hole. Mm -hmm. And this is all us scientists, we never understood the full structure, and over decades and centuries we've built things for it to try to explain for the same thing. But now we understand the whole process is the same, so we bring everything into one. As I said, we haven't discovered anything, we're just putting the things in order. I see, that's what you It's mean. the same is that I was explaining recently to some scientists in Germany. Uh, they say, how can you explain you can create energy or whatever out of a plasma? I said, now, go to, if you don't understand in a smaller scale, go to a bigger scale. Then mm -hmm. it's easier to understand and you can convert. The same thing as we do with our space system. When we bring it to the body, we understand it more, we go to the bigger scale. You come into the plasma of the solar system, you want water, you go to Earth. Mm -hmm. You want another material, you go to another planet. Yeah. You want to be in the, in the middle with nothing, you stay between the planets. But in that gap between the planets, there is this magnetic field from the Sun which are moving to go to the whatever they are going, rating out to create the balance of the magnetic gravitational field. So, if what I read is already in the plasma. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I go in the plasma of a proton, I take as much energy as I need for that purpose. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. when I finish with it, we go, it doesn't mean that the plasma is going to disappear. If I take one billion gallons of water from the sea of Earth and go into another solar system, 
perhaps would not feel any difference because it's a minute part of a bigger structure and that bombillion is a minute part of a minute part, so it doesn't show anything. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with the energy production. This burning of a fuel to run a generator, to run a turbine and all sorts of things is finished. Now we know how to open the plasma. We go, we want warmers we need, we go closer to the source or further to the source, we mm -hmm. take what we need. And there is enough in the plasma of a proton to feed a man for a lifetime, if you know where you look for it. Yeah. Because this proton has been there for 5 billion years and there is enough magnetic field inside it to last in this solar system for another 5 billion years, as they say. Mm -hmm. So if I take 10,000 years out of it, it's nothing. No. So you don't see any difference. Yeah. And this is the new space, this is the way uh, the new space technology is and this is the way we produce new materials. So and so people don't have to be greedy anymore and to be you take as much scared, as you scared of not getting enough because you take what you need and that's at it. At the time you need what you need. Yeah. As I said recently to some, uh, you know, we, we had some meetings recently in the Cash Foundation Center. I said, how many billions of dollars would you like to sell to aliens? <laughs> Does the dollar worth anything outside this few? Yeah gallons of water we call Earth. Yeah. How much gold can you sell to other people in the universe? Because yeah. they can produce whatever they like. Gold has no meaning beyond the boundary of this atmosphere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The thing is, the problem is one of the things people don't understand. If you work at the level which we work, and you understand the way the universe works, yeah. you will understand a simple thing. Intelligence and life is not exclusively of this planet. No, I bet. So, <laughs> in time, very soon, we will come across other more intelligent people than us. And the job of the Cash Foundation, this is our website, is to educate and prepare man for the final encounter. That uh, we join the universal community. We've been like a little tribes, cocooning mm -hmm. their own island. Yeah. And now the purpose of this technology is to prepare that when we join the universal community, we are not inferior because of our knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because then it becomes the blacks and the whites and the Africans yeah, yeah, yeah. in the past yeah. will and be abused. Fighting again. Yeah. There will be no fighting. There is mm -hmm. no fighting in the space. Mm -hmm. There is nothing as such. So <coughs> we try to teach that everybody carries the same knowledge, that no more abuse and there's no inferiority. But at the same time, we have to learn first ourselves to put our prejudices aside. This yes. is a huge problem at the moment, yeah. even in, in the Western countries. Even in a country like Belgium, there are two, one nation and three languages and they don't understand each other. <laughs> yeah. And this is Western world in 21st century. Yeah. So, uh, men or the leaders of the countries have to start educating their people that the colors and races are meaningless and then you can join a bigger structure. And the problem is, which I see it and is at the moment sitting on the table, is that nations who have crossed the barrier understand the problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there are nations who are developing the technology and cross the barrier. And the thing is, the others are still playing with little toys called fighter planes. Yeah. As I said, and the oil recently, and, the, and, the, and the, the, the nuclear energy and the, all that. Uh, sort of thing. The problem is, they are so greedy for nothing. Yeah. yeah. As I said, billions of dollars worth nothing beyond beyond the boundary of this planet. You try to sell to sell sand to the Arabs, as they yes. say. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, the problem is, and as we try to enforce it, uh, to bring it to the governments is that you listen and play the fair game or we enforce the game, fair game, which is very easy. We put a meeting for the governments on 21st of December, sorry, 21st of April, mm -hmm. yeah. three, four weeks ago in Belgium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We invited all the governments and some ambassadors and diplomats came to the meeting and we showed them the system. We showed them what this technology is going to be and what can do. To them, it's something which is not acceptable because 
Americans don't have it or they won't allow it. Within 36 hours after we made the presentation on 21st of April, the American President, His Excellency President Obama, issued a decree that anybody produces a knowledge that another nation can produce or use that can stop communications and that kind of thing for whatever they have attached to it, the organization and the scientists become a criminal. So it was a direct attack on us. So yeah. as scientists we became criminals. So I wrote back in an open letter in my forum that so NASA becomes a criminal organization because they produced Teflon 30, 40 years ago and the Teflon is getting used in the kitchen of the yeah, uh, presidential palaces in mm -hmm. Iran or so wherever they are mm -hmm. saying oh, I'm a terrorist of. So then who is who? Mm -hmm. So at the time that the time of these playing games is over. Yeah. So we have now organized the second international meeting of governments on the 6th of September at the Keshe Foundation Center in Belgium, mm -hmm. where the governments are invited for the second time to attend, to understand exactly what this thing is going to do in the near future, if there is an obstruction or if they do not come to understand what is to come, what is to be developed. And within a few days and a week after the 6th of September, we start teaching internationally the technology to all the nations at the same time. Oh, wow. Which means from September on, we open our patents in a direct way internationally to all the, all the nations. So governments know what is to come. And from September on, every man who's got access to a telephone or an internet mm -hmm can learn how to develop the technology. Whoa. So the first seminar for this has been organized for 21st of uh, September, which will be a live presentation. And we start to start with teaching for people to understand the difference between old and new. Mm -hmm. yeah. and for to make the paradigm shift, paradigm so to speak. Shift. Yeah. And for this purpose, Professor Mayer, who is a well-known international professor in Tesla, yeah. which is well-known. Mm -hmm. He is our first lecturer in the center. He comes to be with us for a one-day seminar. Then we start teaching the both sides. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we start going through the process of the medical application with other yes. scientists. I see. Okay. So we start the teaching process of the technology in a very solid base and the foundation within the next uh, few weeks will release four books which is a textbook of how to make all the systems which we developed mm -hmm. free of charge as a pdf file on the website of the foundation oh. so uh, we sell our books up to now as part of the teach as part of the education mm -hmm. but the teaching will be free for everybody so this time if you're in Africa or if you're in North Pole, you all learn at the same time free of charge, which mm -hmm. means we bring balance into intellectual rights that no one can abuse. And because the knowledge is freely open, nobody can patent the future technologies. I see. The yeah. patent business, which has become abuse yeah, or control, yeah. with this technology is finished. And we have put everything in order that we cannot be blocked or we cannot be killed that it can silence the technology. It's all been set up, it's all been done, and that's why we announce it. Now yeah. we are secure to do it. So from end of this year, we start a full international teaching of the full space technology, mm -hmm. uh, the energy production, mm -hmm. the medical application, and the, what do you call it, the production of food. Oh, and yeah. so it's, it's, a, it's a shift uh, uh, which has been promised and now we have the knowledge is ours, it doesn't belong to no organization and it's our prerogative to give our, what do you call it, knowledge freely to everybody. Yeah. So we cannot be blocked, we cannot be stopped, there is no patent and in so many ways within a matter of few weeks or months 
anybody can fly anywhere <laughs> unless the government <laughs> accept to bring order before the technology is released because there is a huge problem there is a huge problem our patents have been in public for five years and hundreds of thousands of people have downloaded it so it's no use blocking it no it's everywhere it's, already. it's already out yeah. we use the system over the past 20 years to beat the system abuse system to be stopped so mm. they organized the patent european patent a world patent and we use the same process if i wanted to release my technology it would have taken me tens of 20 years to put it in public anybody to find now all the governments have downloaded all the patents everybody has it every government has the patent so now we tell them how to ignite it yeah, yeah? everybody has a Rolls Royce made of gold and diamond. The only <laughs> thing is they didn't have the ignition key. The ignition key is now is being released. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the uh, the shift which a lot of people were hoping in 2012 has already started about 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And now we release it for everybody that no child in Africa needs to go hungry in bed and no one can die after a disaster or earthquake. Okay. You can have a system immediately affected and then you can support life and keep integrity and dignity of humans. Mm -hmm. Wow, well, I see unconditional love in capital letters here. It's uh, bringing balance to the system. Yeah. That's what I think is. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> the abuse has come when you put value on everything. Yeah. This way, the only value is left on respect and love. And uh, participating in helping and developing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. if you can have 20 kilos of steak from fresh air, <laughs> uh, you don't want to eat the steak every day. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. We, when, uh, thanks to the Office of His Excellency, President Ahmed Nejad, um, we produced the first protein in Tehran exactly four years ago, September 2008. Mm -hmm. And the scientists who were with me, they never understood how uh, systems were clocked with protein, with grease, with fat, where it was an absolute 100% clean laboratory. I produced protein from the fresh air and then it absorbed into the systems. They couldn't understand it, but I knew what I've done. Okay. So, in reality, it's very simple. Now we, we have oxygen, we have hydrogen, we have nitrogen, and we have oxygen, uh, carbon in the air. Yeah. All it is, we have learned the process that how the cows and the animals convert this into meat, and then we eat it. Mm -hmm. Now we develop the process, we do the conversion, very simply, in a very simple system. So, you want a beef or a banana, it's the same. You it have to know crazy. the composition? You have to know the gravitational magnetic field of the composition. Okay, that's it. This, okay. is, this is exactly, if you know the gravitational magnetic field, you come to Earth. If you know the gravitational magnetic field of the Mars, you produce it, it gets attracted to Mars. Yeah? So, yeah. time of the burning of fuel and being on the way from here to Mars, seven months is finished, that's the way. Uh, Thanks to the scientists from NASA, were working. So in my demonstrations I show a very simple magnet. If you have a ring magnet and you have a smaller one, a smaller mass gets attracted to the bigger mass. Our aircraft in mass compared to Mars are nothing. Mm -hmm. So when you create gravitational and magnetic field matching of the Mars in the right position, you get attracted to it. No fuel is burned. No, yeah, just goes like that. Yeah, yeah. you see it. You just so the time of flight mm. You know, seven months to Mars and waiting till the Earth in the position, it's finished. Mm -hmm. It's in reality finished. And as you know, the Iranian government announced the 8th of March last year to have a spaceship program. The spaceship program, or SSP, is gravitational magnetic fuel without burning fuel. Mm -hmm. So we showed it uh, with the medical application. We get people yeah. with a Parkinson. Yeah, tell, tell, tell us more about that. that this works. is the same thing. Yeah. The same thing. A gravitational magnetic field of certain mm. atoms or molecules in the body changes because of other magnetic gravitational fields which are in the structure of the body. 
you get a stressed. A stress is a release of magnetic gravitational field. It's like your waves from the sun. Mm-hmm. When they come in a huge mass, they hit the surface of the sun, the earth on the top, we get huge amount of what they call radiation fallouts and all sorts of things, damages the satellites. Change the satellite to your cell, your spine. Mm-hmm. You will produce a stress, that field released, hits the neural system or hits the cell of the neural system, it changes its characteristic or it moves mm-hmm. it to another position, you call it cancer, you call it um, MS, you call it Parkinson, yeah. I call it m- change of position or location. Yeah. All we do, we bring it back to its, its position, and so you don't have the disease. And this is the simplicity of it, this is a very simple way to put it. Yeah. Our stresses release is a kind of release of both magnetic and gravitational fields from the, our own structure. And because this magnetic gravitational field is very near and close to the rest of the structure of our own body, the first thing we harm is ourselves. Mm -hmm. We move something. And this is what we call diseases. Mm -hmm. So all we do, we reverse what you've done yourself. It's the way we showed with MS. With MS it's the same process. MS at the moment is become fashionable to say, myelin disappears. No myelin ever disappears. If you can show me a cavity or an infection in the spine of somebody who has MS, then I say, yes, if something disappears, there is a gap, then there is a gangrene. We don't see these things. Now we understand that MS, it only comes because the carbon element of the amino acid changes the structure from a normal graphite mm-hmm. to a diamond structure reversed. So. Our body neural system is all diamond structure, which means no current, no voltage, nothing can cross the neural system. Uh-huh. Our nerves on the boundary have a diamond structure. Mm-hmm. In the center, that's the they are yeah, that's, in the center they are graphite. They are like a pencil. They are the mm-hmm. brushes on the electric cables, what do we call in generators. So, in fact. You don't need a tube of nerves to carry the information. As long as your structure of the crystals is the same on the same line, yeah. this, the neural system becomes a conductor or resistor. Yeah. So what happens with MS is that your diamond structure of the amino acid on the outer layer of the neural line becomes a conductor. Nothing disappears. All we do, we transfer, we change this back to a diamond structure. There is no leakage, you walk again. We don't do any magic. This is understanding the working of the universe. And if you ask the scientists who are well, well understand the, uh, what they call it, MS condition, they show you MRI and they say, if you look at the spinal cord, it's gray on the top or whatever, this shows there is MS. In fact, in a simple language, pencil is black in color. Diamond is clear. Yeah, yeah, it shows so, up differently. Well, yeah, but yeah. the thing is, when the diamond, st- the carbon structure in amino acid changes from the diamond structure, which is crystal clear, yeah. a white, to a black, when you will mix the white and black together, you get grey. Mm-hmm. So now we can even scientifically see, understand what we say is there. Okay. But that is millions and millions of atoms of carbon changing their crystal structure. Oh. So when you see the greyness on the spinal cord of MS, it means so many cells have changed from diamond to carbon yeah. and you see the black, that's a grey mixture. So all we do, we change yeah. it back to its original and that's it, so you walk and there is no MS. Yeah. And then they say MS people are always tired, they're exhausted, they can't move. When you have a leakage, electrical leakage, the brain produces a lot of energy which is going nowhere, it leaks into the stomach or to the lung. So. You think you're not doing anything, but your actual stomach is taking a lot of information, which is energy from your body, from your brain, to do something which is going nowhere, so you feel exhausted. When you mm-hmm. stop these leakages, there's no... When you change the crystal to a diamond again, and mm-hmm. the leakage stops, so that energy is available to you again, and you walk, you feel better. This is the way the new structure of the medicine is going to be. Wow. So Amazing. we understand it, and that's how in our videos on our internet you see people yeah. walking, yeah. and we see people 
at the moment, uh, it's not all happy stories. We learn from failures, yeah. and we build on the failures. We very recently, in the past few days, we lost one of the volunteers to cancer, and uh, she is the first lady. She she um, donated her body to the foundation for us to find out how cancer has worked, how our system has worked in her body. Oh, wow. And she made sure that the doctors in the hospital know that uh, any organ of the body we want, the foundation requires for medical testing, will be given to the foundation. And I actually carry the part of her body with me today. Oh. It's going back to, to Belgium to be analyzed. Mm. So people have started donating their bodies, their, their time, their properties, because they can see the change is to mm -hmm. them, not to us. Mm -hmm. And as you know, Cash Foundation is a thing, is a Dutch organization, which, as I always say, I'm a caretaker. Is owned by the people. It's been structured in a way yeah. that every citizen of the earth is the owner of the foundation. So you cannot patent something which you already own. No. Mm -hmm. So this is the way we have done it, and this is the way we block the whole process because the foundation, after I die even now, I'm just a servant, is owned by people. So you cannot, that's why we release our patent this way from our, all our technology because you cannot patent something which everybody owns. No. So everybody is the owner of the full knowledge. So the governments want to play who can they claim they own. Nobody owns it anymore. Mm -hmm. So in a way, we have used the system to serve the system, to serve yeah, the people. To serve the people, yeah. And that's, that's what it is, and that's how <coughs> it's been set up. It's taken a lot of hard work to achieve it. And now we are in a position to say, more or less, we have achieved our goal. And very soon, uh, people who say, can we see your power generator? We say, the knowledge is there, go and make your own. But this time, you have to understand that you have to pay to your government, to the people who serve you, the people who educate your child. Just because you call it a free energy, I don't have to pay for energy. That energy which you consume at this moment of time to oil or whatever creates taxes which pays for your child to be in a school or your father to be looked after in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Human race has got to find a new way to serve, not to be served. Yeah. And this will take a, a shift in thinking and all that me, me, me has to finish. It becomes I serve, not serve me. Yeah. And this is how we do, we in our foundation, we yeah. have people who can't afford paying for the system at the moment, we give system free to them. Mm. Yeah, that, that is a serve. question also, that people have stories about that it's too expensive. Yes, if it's too expensive and you cannot afford it, mm -hmm. you get it freely. Yeah. But if you can afford it, you pay what you can afford. Because sure. the, the mm -hmm. systems at the moment we have to buy. Things have to be bought, to be made, to be done. Mm -hmm. It's not a magic, you come here, I touch you, it's nothing, you take my energy. Yeah. And the whole thing is, yes, we charge for equivalent to, to what it will be. How, I will, I, you go to a restaurant nowadays, in anywhere in Europe, you have a three-course meal, minimum is about 40 euro. Mm -hmm. yeah. How much do you value a life which is paralyzed for under 20 years in bed? Yeah. Huh? Do you understand? Yeah. So, if you don't have it, we pay for it. It's absolutely free. I was in a presentation somewhere in Holland last night, a, a woman and a, a, a girl and her father came to me and says, you refuse our mother for fibromyalgia because she couldn't pay. I said, you tell me where? Mm. If you can't afford, we always have, we pay, we, you get system free. But the problem is, we used to give system free. People have used it. Yeah. We never learned anything. Okay. Now people, because they pay, they have respect to past information for us yeah. to do our work. It, uh, it, uh, yeah. You see, pertains people, to their consciousness. Uh, people to have done it to themselves. Yeah. yeah. In a way, as I said very recently, the sickness and the illness 
and diseases come to every man. Being a president of the United States, being the Queen of England, matter, yeah. being a peasant in South Africa, or being an Aborigines in Australia. Mm -hmm. So, if you destroy the Keshe Foundation, technology now is reversing a lot of things that happen to everybody, you destroy yourself. Yeah. You don't shoot yourself in the foot and want to go for a marathon, do you? No. <laughs> this is the simple yeah. translation mm -hmm. of it. So, we are not here to damage anybody, we are not here to change anything. We are here to put the things in the right order, but at the same time not to disturb the balance of the society. Yeah. It's taken millions of years to bring a society the way it is. And instead of paying, there is no barter anymore, but you can put time in to serve and to be served. And this is something which we try to teach and we see Hundreds of thousands of people are coming to understand and they're ready for the, what we call the shift very soon. Yeah. And so um, I think uh, within the next few months we will see a huge shift by making everything available to everybody at the same time. You don't have to be a professor in university in Holland or to be a doctor in South America to understand it. We make it so simple that everybody can have access direct and they mm -hmm. know how to use the material in their own environment to reach the target. It's very simple. You can create a small system which creates enough energy that you can absorb enough moisture from the air that through our space technology and medical application you can nourish that water to the amount of energy you need to sustain life. Mm -hmm. So what else do you need? We yeah. give you the heat, we give you the shelter, yeah. we give you the food, and we give you the water. And the whole thing cannot cost more than a few dollars. Amazing. Yeah? Yeah. And there is no need for computers. This is what I always used to say in my early interviews. When Earth was created, nobody went there and said, you need a hundred liter of this and two hundred liter of that, what comes? Yeah. What is in that environment comes together in a balanced order mm -hmm. and decides mm -hmm. the creation of what is going to be. So this yeah. will be the same for man on earth. So we produce from what is in our environment what we need at the same time. I talk a bit too much, but it's part no, of it's No, it's fascinating. It's fascinating what you're saying. Uh, I think we need another talk sometime. But yes, for we don't now, have any more time. No, no, and for now we have no more time. So thank you, Miran Keshe, yeah, for your you for your time you and your amazing technology and your love for this world and everything. Thank you very much.